Hello and welcome to my first ever Let's Play. Um, we will be playing XCOM Apocalypse. Um, it's quite different from the um, first two games. Um, the main differences are, as we start a game, we'll be starting on easy. This is the map, and as you can see, quite a difference. Instead of getting the whole of the earth to defend, you defend this city. This is Mega Primus 1. And as you can see, there are various buildings. Each of these buildings serve a function, um, and they are owned by um, different factions and corporations. So if we click on one, for example, that is a flyer factory. It's owned by Super Dynamics, and they'll produce a certain item that you'll be able to buy in the game. Um, and if, for instance, they are um, being controlled by the aliens, um, or end up being allied to the aliens, kind of like how the uh, the old countries um, would have been allied to the aliens in the first two games, you won't be able to buy their equipment. Um, now, if you've got one of the uh, let's have a look who are they owned by They're owned by the government psych so psych are and they'll be neutral to me so not psych. Ah, I think it's psych yep so psych criminal syndicate based in the slum areas um, and they developed what's called a cyclone, um, which is basically like a, a an implant. Um, so, and you'll be able to get hold of um, those in-game by raiding either Psyche, um, a siren, one of the other um, criminal organisations, the cult Cyrus, um, and as you can see here, it's telling you, neutral towards XCOM, uh, that's their symbol. Um, and more than likely that's going to be the tattoo that all the, the members of that organisation, well, criminal organisation, are going to have. Um, it's their total balance, so they've got 13,000, um, and their income is 24,000 each week. It's done by weeks and not months in this game, and the amount of alien infiltration. So if that hits 100%, then that's it. They are 100% controlled by the aliens, and when they are controlled by the aliens, um, there's no possible way of getting them back on your side. If, for instance, you happen to annoy certain um, companies or organizations, you can actually pay them, um, and they will um, go back to unfriendly or neutral or friendly or whatever. That's a, a police station, so that, that's owned by Megapol, the police force in the city. Only allied with Megapol at the moment, apparently, um, but that'll quickly change. Um, the government will be uh, allied to me as well. Um, those are the rest of the, the companies. Most of them are neutral. The only hostile one we've got is the Cult of Cerus. Um, and they are like a religious organization um, who think that the uh, the aliens um, are here to bring I don't know redemption to humans or something like that. Yeah, there we are. Cult has been long believed in redemption of the human race by a superior alien race, um, ignoring the fact that the the aliens are coming around and, and killing people and stuff. So you know. Whatever. Okay, so let's have a look at his base. Okay, thankfully, it's actually exactly the same base. Oh, hmm. Actually, it's not exactly the same. It's ever so slightly too different to the last um, video I've just done. Um, unfortunately, it crashed, but I did waffle on for 20 odd minutes before actually getting down and doing anything. So I'm going to do it a bit quicker this time um, and explain things as I go along instead of just going off on a tangent. Might still do that anyway, but whatever. Um, uh, the difference between the um, the first two games' bases is 
say for instance that would have been your base area this is our base area here but I can't build on on these areas I can only build where as you can see on the left hand side it says corridor you can only build on these tiles here so um, we have vehicle repair bay uh, which is similar to the hangar in the first two games and um, this is where aliens or hostile organizations because they can actually attack you and in all likeliness they're more likely to attack you than the aliens um, in my last um, playthrough I was attacked several times by um, a siren who ended up being controlled by the aliens um, and it was them that attacked me several times um, the aliens never attacked me um, apart from bringing in the odd mothership or battleship and just absolutely hammering my base so what I want to do is pop security station there um, and at least one security station there um, kind of leaves that that bit open there but that's not the worst thing in the world so this base is, is fairly defendable although it is split into two halves um, but my the base in uh, in my other play pl playthrough was a lot worse I had this thing right in the middle while I had the uh, the access lift on like the other side or something like over here um, and the, the base was sort of set in a square ish like that instead of having anything up here it was just all across um, and <laughs> I had important structures, uh, well, um, facilities like right next to my vehicle repair base. So I couldn't just take them down and, and rebuild them somewhere else and put a security station there. It would have really messed up things like my research. Um, so oops, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to do that. So I built two of them, and I want uh, an additional living quarters. So I'll be needing more scientists and more soldiers. Um, so pretty much got everything. Um, the stores aren't anywhere near full, um, and we've got everything that we need to begin the game. Okay, research first before I forget. So these are our researchers. Just pop them inside, and um, you can obviously have the pool of researchers and. Well, there's no point in changing them out. You put your best researchers in. Um, although you can have several facilities, so you can have like your worst researchers in one doing something less important, your best ones doing something that is really important. Okay, as you can see, they're all named, unlike you in the other ones where you had uh, just a, a standard engineer um, and um, scientist, and there's someone making some very odd noises. I really hope you can hear that because oh, it's kind of freaky. Um, I think that's the guy living upstairs. He is completely and utterly insane. And I think he's trying to sing and failing miserably, but never mind him. So anyway, they, they've got names and they've actually got a skill. Um, which they didn't have before, so adding up the skill means that in this research facility we have a total skill of 396. Uh, each sort of piece of research, so for example the dimension gates, which I'll show you soon, um, will require a certain um, amount of research, so like that'll produce 396 re uh, research points per hour and it'll need like 10,000 research or something like that, I mean, probably not 10,000 at all actually, it only takes about just over a day I think, he, around about 400 skills, so um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Mm, biochemistry and a biotransport module. This will allow you to um, transport a, a, a dead or, or alive aliens um, from your ground missions back to your base so you can research them I and it's very important that you get one of these built um, as soon as possible so we need that researching and that research there's nothing to produce in the minute the first thing we'll produce is a biotransport module as soon as we've got it researched 
that's the first thing we need to get built straight away. We need to get onto the uh, um, the research of aliens um, immediately. Um, less important for their technology just yet. Um, it will be very important later on, but not right now. We've got to get our biochemistry research up and running as soon as possible. What we also need is we'll take that soldier. It's a real shame actually. Um 